In this video, we're going to look at different rules involved with taking derivatives. Up until this point, we've been concerned with only using the definition of the derivative, which was defined by two equivalent forms of a limit, in order to take our derivative for a function. Now, we know that there are some rules that are almost shortcuts that we can use instead of having to do the long, drawn-out process of the definition of the derivative over and over again. We can use these rules instead. So, looking at this question that we have here, we have a given function given by a rational function, and we want to try to find f prime of x. And the hint that's given to us on the website is it's easier to simplify than derive. What they mean is we could use the quotient rule here. Both of these functions in the numerator and denominator are by themselves differentiable. There's no problem with deriving them bit by bit. So we could use the quotient rule, but what that's going to entail is taking this function times the derivative of this function minus this function times the derivative of that function all over this squared. So it gets to be a lot with multiplying and adding exponents and simplifying, and it's a lot of work for us to do for a process that could be made simpler by simplifying our function first, then deriving by maybe a much simpler process that we're more familiar with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this process by first rewriting my function so I have more room to work. But this first step that I'm going to conduct after I get done rewriting this is what I'm going to do is if I don't already have a term that uh, has a either a rational exponent or a integer exponent attached to it, I'm going to go ahead and take care of doing that. So what I mean is when we arrive to something like the fourth root of x cubed or the fourth root of x, we can translate these two terms into x raised to some rational exponent, where the numerator represents our integer power and the denominator represents our root power. So the first part of the process I'm going to do is translate those. 3x squared is good. We don't have to worry about translating that at all. But here what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this fourth root of x cubed to x to the 3 over 4. Okay? And then I'm also, I'll take care of the denominator since it's kind of the same process. But here in this case, we're still going to have over 4 because the root power is the same. But here our integer power is just 1. So if I look at minus 7 over x right here, what I can do is instead of having this in the denominator and pose maybe some complications for me later in the process, what I'm going to do is bring this x to the 1 power into the numerator of this fraction that's involved in. So whenever we do that, what happens is the power that it's raised to gets negated. So what we're going to have actually is minus 7x to the negative 1. So this is what we're dealing with now. We have all these different powers converted and these exponents to where they look like a integer or something that is a rational exponent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to implore a rule that we have for subtracting fractions. I'm going to illustrate it over here real quick. So if we have two fractions, so we have a over c minus b over c, as long as we have a common denominator like this, we can translate this into one fraction where the numerator is a minus b and this is over C. We've done this before many a time in the questions that we've looked at so far for our homeworks. We've gone this way. But because it's an equal sign, we can also go this way, meaning that I can write the difference of terms as individual fractions over that common denominator. So that's what I'm going to do in this next step in order to simplify my fraction down a little bit. So how that's going to look is each term in the numerator, 3x squared, x to the 3 fourths, and 7x to the minus 1 is all going to become the numerator of its own fraction. So how that's going to look is we have 3x squared over x to the 1 fourth minus x to the 3 fourths over x to the 1 fourth minus 7x to the negative 1 over x to the 1 fourth. The reason why I did that is because now it's easier to simplify these bit by bit than saying, okay, I'm going to divide this by this, this by this, this by this, all in the same step. It looks a lot nicer this way. We can, we can keep track of what we're doing with each ind independent term and their respective exponent. So now, when we have the same base divided by the same base like this, what can we do to their exponents? We can subtract them. And in this case, we do the numerator power minus the denominator power. So what this term is going to turn into is we're still going to keep 3x 
because 2 minus 1 fourth does not cause this x to go away, so we're still going to have this x, but 2 minus a fourth is going to need us to do a little LCD work here, but we know that since this is over 1, the LCD between these two is 4, so I've got to multiply this by 4, so we get 8 over 4 minus 1 over 4, or 7 fourths. So I get that, so this is 3x to the 7 fourths now. The second term is 3 fourths minus a fourth. So what that turns into is x to the 2 fourths or x to the 1 half. You can write it either way. I simplified the fraction. It doesn't really play a, a bearing, but we recognize x to the 1 half more readily as the square root of x than we do x to the 2 fourth. So here, what we have for our last term is 7x to the negative 1 over x to the 1 fourth. So we have minus, so we have negative 1 minus a fourth which means that since this is over 1, again, our LCD is going to be 4, so we get negative 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4, so this becomes negative 5 fourths. So here we get 7x to the negative 5 fourths. So let's keep in mind that this function that we still have here and that we've rewritten a couple times is still f of x. We haven't derived the original function anyway. All we've done is simplified a bunch of the exponents and the powers to make it look a lot cleaner. This is not as messy of a look as this, because when we get to this point, we know that in individually on each of these terms, we can use the power rule, because we know that if we take a difference like this, in this case of three terms, that the derivative of this difference is the difference of the derivatives. So we can take the derivatives with the power rule of this term, this term, and this term individually, and then just subtract them. We know that rule to be a thing, as we've talked about in class. So as we take the derivative of each term, now we're moving into f prime of x, the derivative of our original function. So what the power rule says is we bring this power that we have down in front of whatever leading coefficient we have of this term, and then we subtract 1 from the power. So what this is going to look like in this case for the first term is we have that power 7 fourths times 3x, but then we have 7 fourths minus 1, again over 1, LCD is going to be 4 again, so here we get 7 fourths minus 4 over 4, or 3 fourths. So our new power for our derivative is going to be 3x to the 3 fourths. So now we have this for our first term is done. In the next step, we'll take care of multiplying because I think we're also going to have to do it with this term. In this case, we again, bring down the power. So we have 1 half x, and then 1 half minus 1 is simply negative a half, right? Because we subtracted 1 from 1 half, and we get negative a half. So for our last term, we have, again, we're going to bring down the power, negative 5 fourths times 7x, but then here, negative 5 fourths minus 1 turns into negative 5 fourths minus 4 over 4, which gives us negative 9 fourths. So the new power for this term is negative 9 fourths. So here, we've derived. We've used the power rule to derive. All I'm going to do now is take care of the multiplication of these two constants right here, because we have a constant times a constant and a constant times a constant. And at that point, we'll be done by t with taking our derivative. So 7 fourths times 3 is 21 fourths x to the 3 fourths. The middle term stays the same. It doesn't have a multiplication we have to carry out. And then we have a, neg a minus times a negative. So we have plus 35 fourths x to the negative 9 fourths. And after we've done this, this is what our derivative looks like. This is our derivative function, and like I said, we could have used the quotient rule from the very start of the problem here, but it would have gotten really messy really fast, just with a lot of exponents floating around, and the way that we went about it by simplifying the function that we were originally given, breaking it up into different fractions and taking care of their powers individually, and then using the power rule to derive, it was a lot cleaner and smoother of a process.